Good evening, everybody. Got a uh, nice little scenario here with the Ukraine situation uh, still go ongoing and the quagmire that it's become. There's been a lot of talk about what happens if there's an escalation specifically regarding Russia potentially using some type of lower yield tactical nuclear weapon to escalate to de-escalate so what i'm going to explore is that possibility so in this scenario which i'm not going to show but russia has launched a low yield tactical nuclear weapon nuclear weapon against ukraine three um three of them meant as more of a scare tactic the United States, in what is almost certainly an improbable scenario, has decided that they want to launch a first strike, decapitation strike, take out the Russian nuclear forces. So, what I'm going to do is, as the United States, I'm going to target a country, I'm going to utilize 80% of our stockpile, 100% military targets. This is representing leaving behind a 20% force for follow-on strikes and or protection against any other aggressor. I'm going to go ahead, click to set. You're going to see already launches happening. So let's see what happens. I'm going to zoom in here. We see a significant amount of strikes already targeting ICBM sites. Now, as I said, in this scenario, we're going to model that Russia did not have time to react. About 30 minutes at best for ICBMs. Sub-launched ones will be quicker. I am not going to allow the aerial bombers to launch. So, I'm going to pause the simulation here. You see, aerial bombers have taken off. But by this point, Russia can react. So we're going to see what is left of the Russian nuclear force to be able to strike back against America. So I'm going to go in Russia. So perfect scenario as far, not perfect scenario, but perfect execution from the United States. They launched a first strike without warning. They were able to hit Russia without Russia having time to you know, the early warning radars went off, but there wasn't time for reaction from the Russian government. So now Russia is going to strike back with what they have remaining. So I'm going to Russia, going to target. This time they're going to use 100% of the remaining force, and they're going to target 100% civilians. So let's go. Let's see what happens. So we see launches already starting from their subs, which is probably what little remains of their forces as they were not, it was done without warning. They didn't have time to disperse their bombers and or their mobile launchers. What we're seeing here is still a significant amount of warheads obviously significantly reduced from what would have happened but still let's see if there's anything else coming okay let's go ahead and pause calculate casualties Keep in mind, this is almost ideal, perfect situation where we're able to hit their facilities without them having time to react with their ICBMs or their mobile launchers. So we see here, even under that perfect scenario, their counter-strike killed 
5,107,200 Americans. Now, 16.5 million Russians did perish with the um, counter force strikes by the United States. Russia launched back on counter value strikes. Take a quick look at fallout doses. So we're going to see significant fallout. We have Los Angeles. Some family around this area. Might be having a good time right then. We're going to see Florida. Some areas of Texas. So take a quick look and see what we saw for fallout. Russia probably going to show a little bit larger amount of fallout due to just a higher amount of warheads. So some people are going to say, well, what about China? You know, that's a whole other topic about geopolitics and everything. But let's say that the United States expended their other 20% against China just a hypothetical situation so I'll come back here and then we can look at what would happen at that point so United States we're gonna go 100% of their remaining force and we're going to do it 100% against military targets again counter force strike doesn't seem to be a whole lot happening even though it was only 80% of their forces were supposed to launch doesn't look like we have a significant number left I'm gonna go ahead and run this out anyways but it looks like almost they're exclusively targeting they are targeting some facilities so Looks like most of that's done. So I want to do now China. I want to do same scenario, 100% forces, 100% civilian. So this is their chance to strike back. So we'll see what they are able to accomplish. It's being a little weird right now. Well, that kind of fell flat on its face. So, tell you what, let's do this. I'm just going to do China completely separate since that fell flat on its face. Let's go to the United States. United States, we're going to do target. We're going to do 20%, 100% military. Do this quickly. Okay. Now, go back to China. China's going to use 100%. And they're going to target 100% civilian populations. Okay, let's take a look. This is going to be in accordance. So China would have suffered 3.2 million, 3.3 million casualties. The United States would have suffered 1.2 million additional casualties. So, the point of this exercise is even under the perfect first strike scenario where the enemy's forces are not dispersed and you're able to target them through satellite imaging 
intel stealth assets everything else even under perfect scenarios you're still likely to suffer ca return casualties into the multi-millions and that's not counting long-term effects long-term effects through supply chains logistics food medical supplies fallout um, whole different debate about nuclear winter clearly mutually assured destruction the whole point is that um, we can mess each other up so ideally speaking nobody's doing any first strikes second strikes or any other strikes but this is a possibility of what could happen a lot of people will say it's not a prediction of what will happen it's a possibility of what could happen so um, it's an interesting little tool it's a nuclear war simulator it's a great little device it's fun to play around with i said i was going to do some additional content and give this stuff a break for a little bit but again every time i say that i come up with some different scenarios that'd be interesting to see so this is just one of those possibilities when you talk about nuclear brinkmanship uh, first strike something that's been discussed for some time it's not highly probable but it's important to look at and model to understand what would be the potential effects should something like this occur so it's um if you like the channel please subscribe please like please leave me a comment um again i do this for fun do this as a hobby not a professional but i certainly the more people interact the more i feel kind of motivated to put out additional content appreciate everybody have a great evening thanks good night